Let's say a prayer. God, I'm, I'm grateful to you that you, uh, you chose to allow me to be a part of your work. Matter of fact, you said in Ephesians that, uh, that I was, we created in Christ Jesus to do good works. And so, God, I pray that, uh, that you would allow me to do good works in your name uh, this morning. Lord, I pray that the word of God, that, uh, that you speak in and through me, will meet every heart. Every heart. Every heart, Lord. Every heart. Every heart. And Lord, I just pray, I pray, God, that it's, that the seeds of your word, God, that they don't fall on, on, uh, on rocky ground, Lord. Let it, let it, let it find fertile soil. And so that it can take root, Lord. It's so important that it take root and that it live, Lord, uh, live forevermore. This is what we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much for inviting me. I, I met with Chuck and he asked me if there was any opportunities for me to come and speak in Conway. And so I said, let me look at my schedule and I'll, I'll, I'll send you some dates. And so I did. And there were some times uh, between September and, and, and December that I, could, I was available. So when he got the text back, he said, you can't come to Conway, but you can come to Mosaic and Little Rock on the 18th. So I'm, I'm glad to be here. I I'm, I'm appreciate, appreciate that very much. You know, one of the things that God has taught me is that, you know, the Bible says, Jesus says, upon this rock, this rock, I build my church. So I come to realize that, that nobody here on the earth owns a church. I come to realize that just one church. I'm so glad that I'm a part of that. That, that, that it doesn't make any difference. It may be Fellowship North and Mosaic. It's God's kingdom. That's what I'm about. I'm about the kingdom work of God. I can't be about anything else because that's, that's what God saved me for. That's what God gifted me for is to be about his kingdom. So, uh, I'm excited to be here, and uh, I'm excited to be able to share with you, uh, share with you this morning. Uh, you guys are uh, looking at the Gospel of John, uh, 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 Jesus' life through the eyes of John, and uh, and so I'm picking up where Mark left off, and uh, I want to be able to share with you this morning. You know, when I was when I was a youngster, you know, uh, elementary school. Uh, uh, middle school, high school, even all the way into college. If somebody was to ask me, and some people did, if they asked me, do you believe in God? And I would just say, well, of course. I mean, of course I believe in God. You know, and, and, and why wouldn't I? Because I grew up in a home where my mom, was, you know, she was a, a follower of Christ, and, and, and my grandparents, they were all uh, God-fearing followers of Jesus Christ, and my grandfather and grandmother, and so I went to church, so why wouldn't I, if somebody asked me, do you believe in God? Yeah. Do you believe, in, why sure I believe in Jesus? I would say that, I mean, if people ask me that question, but the truth is, I really didn't believe. I didn't have the kind of belief, the kind of belief that led to hope. I didn't have the kind of belief that led to joy. I didn't have the kind of belief that gave me peace. I didn't have that. I didn't have the kind of belief that allowed me to live uh, unselfishly. I didn't have that kind of belief. I didn't have the kind of belief that led me to serve others. And I didn't have the kind of belief that led me to love people unconditionally. I didn't know what that was. Unconditional? What is that? I didn't have that kind of belief. But that's the kind of belief that God desires that every one of us should have. That's the kind of belief that, that Jesus Christ came to earth in order that we all might have that kind of belief. It's a by faith belief that God wants us to have. And so in, 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 this, in this gospel of John chapter 12, you know, this is, this is Jesus' last uh, uh, public ministry. He spent three years ministering in the public to the people uh, uh, wanting them to come to know him as their Lord and as their Savior, wanting them to be able to come back into a relationship with God, wanting them to, to be back to where they were 
uh, man was before, uh, before the fall in the garden. In the garden, Adam and Eve, they enjoyed a oneness with God. Their lives brought glory to God. And then when sin came, sin took that away. And there was no more glory to God until Jesus came. And what Jesus came to do is to bring us back to God. That's, all of us have a purpose in this life. And that purpose is, is that our lives might bring glory to, to God. That's what God wants. And so the Lord Jesus Christ, he come to earth and he spent the, those three years, he invested those three years. And in John chapter 12, you hear the, the last words of Jesus in his public ministry, his ministry to the public. And from John chapter 13 and on, he's ministering to his disciples. That's who he's speaking to largely. And so we pick up in John chapter 12, verse 36, and there are about four major points that I want to point out as it relates to what's happening in John chapter 12. And, and so the first point is this. There is a final call to believe. There, there's a final, a final call to believe. I want you to say this with me. Jesus gives his final call. Jesus gives his final call. It's his final call, and, and that's what he does. He, he's, he's giving them his final call. The Bible says in those verses that Harry led, read, he says in verse 36, Then Jesus told them, You are going to have the light just a little while longer. Walk while you have the light before darkness overtakes you. Whoever walks in dark does not know where, the, where they are going. Believe, if you go through the rest of these verses that you see the word believe, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about eight times, he used the word believe. He says, believe in the light while you have the light so that you may become children of the light. And then he says, when he had finished. When he had finished speaking, Jesus left and hid himself from them. You hear that? He said whatever it was he had to say. And when he was finished, the next time that, that, that the, the word finished is related to Jesus Christ is when he's hanging on the cross. And he says, it's finished. The, the work is done. And Jesus says this as he ministered to these these, uh, these people, and he said, minister to the Jews. He said, then he, when he finished, when he finished speaking to them, it was done. He hid himself. You want Jesus to hide himself from you? You want him to hide himself from you? It's his final call. And in this final call, Jesus gives the final call because the day of grace is passing away. The day of grace. In their time, the day of grace was passing away. In our time, the day of grace is passing away. He says, you will have, you're going to have the light just a little while longer. In Isaiah 55 and 6, it says, seek the Lord while he may be found and call on him while he is near. It's his final call. Right now, Jesus is near you. And so what will you do? Will you allow him to call you? It's his final call. His final call. He says, now is the time to believe. That's what he's saying to them. T Today is the day, Paul says in 2 Corinthians 6, 2. It's in the time of my favor, I heard you. And in the day of salvation, I help you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is is the day of salvation. Today is. Not later on. Right now is the time to receive the light. Right now is the time to walk in the light. There's, there's no putting it off. There's absolutely no putting off the opportunity that God extends to every one of us that we might come to know him. When I was, uh, uh, when I was in college, that's when that's when I submitted myself to God's call to me. But before that, I thought about how many times sitting in that church did God call me? Did God reach out to me? How many times did the pastor give that invitation and he says, he says come by letter. <laughs> you know, a candidate for baptism. 
How many, how many times did he say that? And I just ignored it. How many times did he share the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ? And I just, I didn't pay any attention to it. It could have been the last call. How many times when I was in college and I went to church, which was very few times, but I would go to church because I knew that my mom was going to ask me, son, did you go to church? So I would go one time so I wouldn't be lying to her. She said, did you go? Yeah, mom, I went to church. Let me tell you what the preacher talked about. You got to have a couple of things to put out there. But how many times in that facility that, that God was speaking directly to me? And it could have been the last time. What about the day that this brother shares the gospel with me? And then the gospel stayed with me from that time on. And then that, not long after that, God gives a call. I'm, I'm at home in my own apartment listening to the word of God spoken to me. And it was at that moment that I knelt down and said to the Lord Jesus, I want you in my life. And at that very moment, God changed my life. What if I would have ignored it at that moment? It could have been the last time. It could have been God's last call to me. I would have missed out on the opportunity to know him, to experience him, to have him as my Lord and Savior. It was his final call. So here's the question. As I'm speaking, is God giving you the final call? Is God, is God knocking on your door? Is God saying to you, come unto me? Is he beckoning you to him? Is he asking you, this is your opportunity to surrender your life to me so you can really have hope? Is he saying to you that church just won't get it just because you go to church? That won't satisfy. Is he saying that to you? These people that Jesus is ministering to, they were very religious. They were religious people. But they didn't know God. They didn't have a relationship with him. They didn't have a relationship with the light. They were living in darkness. When light leaves, then darkness comes. When light shows up, darkness flee. That's what God wants. He wants you to live in the light. That's what he's speaking to these people in John chapter 12, that they come into the light. But he's saying, listen. The light won't be, alone much, won't be around much longer. Then he says, Jesus left and hid himself from them. Wow. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Are you, are you sinning away the day of grace? That God's speaking to your heart? When I was at a, one Sunday, I was speaking, and God put it on my heart to, to say to the to the people in the congregation, if at any moment. You know, I know we always wait to the last minute and say, come on, give your life to Christ. I don't want to do that. Just like then, I don't want to do that today. If God speaks to your heart and God says, this is your call, this is your moment to come to know me, then you should, you should surrender yourself to him. You should allow your, yourself to come to know God and and live in relationship with him. That's what you should do. You shouldn't put it off. You shouldn't miss out on the opportunity. I had a, a friend of mine when I was in college, good friend. And uh, when I became a Christian, I wanted, I wanted my friends to know Jesus too. I, I wanted people I didn't, that wasn't friends with me to know Jesus. I, I just wanted them to know, to experience what I had experienced. But listen. I remember distinctly about an hour sharing with him how, what God had done for me, how God had changed my life. I remember it. And I remember him looking at me and saying, Nash, man, I can see that it's made a difference for you. But he said, man, I, I'm not ready for that. I'm just not ready for that. And he left. And a few days later, he was riding a motorcycle and ripped the back of his skull completely off, and he died. The first thing that I thought is that in those two days, did he, 
Did he hear the call of God? Did he hear God speaking to him? Or did he turn away and miss out on the day of grace of the Lord Jesus Christ? So if God is speaking to you anytime while I'm talking, you can interrupt me. You just come on and say, preacher, I, hey, I'm not going to wait. I want to know the Lord Jesus. Now, I did that over at Fellowship, and, and I was up there, and the next thing I know, I'm, I'm looking out over here, and there's this young lady standing there. I guess she was saying, now, you said come. Now, why, why you got me waiting? <laughs> but I didn't see her, so I come down, and we pray, and then she prayed to receive the Lord. Here's the next thing. Not only is there the final call, there is the failure to believe. There's the failure to believe. The failure to believe. In these next verses, which I believe are some very, very sad verses. And I believe that God, God, He, he speaks to, He allowed the sad things to bring joy. He, he allowed the dark things in order to bring light. I believe, I believe God allowed those things to happen in our lives. I believe that God allows the ugly things to be spoken so that we, for the sake of beauty. I believe he allowed the painful things in, uh, to be spoken for the sake of comfort. So we are entering into some sad, sad situation right here in these next verses. Because in these next verses, we see the failure to believe. That's, that's what happened with these Jewish uh, these Jew, the Jews. In verse 37, he says, after Jesus had performed so many signs in their presence, they still, listen, did you hear this? They still would not believe in him. Even though he'd done so many miracles. I mean, if Jesus, they had seen, they had seen him raise a dead man from the grave. Lazarus had gotten up out of the grave. All I need to do is see that. And I'm like, sign me up. I'm in, I'm, I'm, I'm with you, Lord. I'm down with you. But you know what? Maybe not. Maybe even seeing a miracle wouldn't convince me to, to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe even some of us seeing a miracle wouldn't, wouldn't convince us to come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. There's a, there's a friend of ours that was having tremendous pain. He had a kidney stone. I don't know if you ever had one. I have, and that's tremendous pain. And on top of that, he had really severe back problems from the time I known him. He just walked kind of like this. And so he went and he to pray now, and they prayed for him. They laid hands on him to pray for his kidney stone. And in the process, he was laid out on the floor, and they prayed for him. And, and, and all of a sudden, the kidney stone was absolutely gone. He didn't pass it. It didn't go back in his kidney. It was gone. And not only that, he was asking to pray for his kidney stone, but his back was, was, was healed. I mean, he had tremendous pain. He drove to my house. I wasn't even there and showed up. And my wife said, he would say, look what I can do, kicking <laughs> his leg. I never. Then he drove from there and drove to somebody else's house and said, look, look what God has did for me. He's kicking. And he's been years and years with this back pain, and now he walks upright. God had worked a miracle. Don't you know that people will see that and they still won't believe in the power of God? That's what these people, they had witnessed the power of God. They had a failure to believe. They wouldn't believe. And so we have a sad situation. I don't know about you, but it's always sad when people won't believe. It's always heartbreaking when folks won't surrender to the to the Lord. I don't know about you, but it's sad. It's, it breaks your heart because you know that they're turning away from the very thing that God desires, and that is for them to have a relationship with him, for them to bring glory to him. They're turning away from it, and that's what they have done. So there are two things here in this part of the scripture, two main components that are terminal to unbelief. Two main components that's terminal to unbelief. The first one is the stubborn free will of man. The stubborn free will of man. All the time I heard the gospel, the reason why I didn't submit 
because of the stubborn free will of man. Because I wanted to do what I wanted to do. Because I was selfish, because I was prideful, because I couldn't see myself living that Christian life. Stubborn free will of man. That's what, that's what kept these Jewish people from coming to know the Lord Jesus Christ. They were stubborn. They, they had looked for a savior. They had looked for somebody, but they wanted somebody the way they wanted him. They, they wanted the Messiah to meet their criteria. They wanted a Messiah that they could control, that they could dictate, that they could tell what to do. They didn't want a Messiah who would be Lord over them. They didn't want that. They didn't want a Messiah that would have to die and go to the cross. For the Bible says in verse 34, he says, the crowd spoke up. We have heard from the law that the Messiah will remain forever. So how can you say the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? They're like, what are you talking about? You're going to be lifted up? You're going to die? We heard the Bible. The Bible says he lived forever. They must have missed the part that said that he was going to, he was going to be lifted up. He's going to die. And they, they were the ones who brought about the death. They brought about his death. It was all a part of God's plan. First, it's, God, it's the stubborn will of man. That's, that's what's terminal. Your, the man's will is stubborn. Secondly, it's because, it's because the sovereign will of God. Ah, oh. now that right there, it gets, it gets really kind of sticky. You got the stubborn will of man. Then you got the sovereign will of God. Now, listen, it was part of God's plan that they would not believe. You said, wait a minute now. You mean to tell me that God made it so they went, no, nah, no, nah, not necessarily. They were stubborn, and so what God did is he turned them over to their stubbornness. You remember in Romans chapter 1, he gave them over. He gave them up. That's what God had done for these and he prophesied of it. He spoke about their stubborn will. God said that they were going to be stubborn through, the, through Isaiah, Isaiah 53. Listen to what he says. He says, Lord, who has believed our message? Hardly anybody believed. When you get to the book of Acts, there are 120 believers. Hardly anybody received the Lord Jesus Christ. Hardly anybody was willing to follow him. Then he says, Lord, who has believed our message? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Who, who is it that God has shown himself to through the miracles? Their hearts were hardened. That's why they couldn't receive him, because their hearts were hardened. And Jesus prophesied of it. Now listen. This is what the next verse says, verse 30. He says, listen, for this reason, they could not believe. They would not believe because they could not believe. And the reason why they could not believe is because their hearts were stubborn. And God prophesying knew long before Jesus made it to the scene that they, they, they would not believe. And so he had already said, I give them over. So this is what he says. He has blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts. So they can neither see with their eyes, nor understand with their hearts, nor turn and would heal them. So Jesus says, uh, 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 the scripture says, John uh, quotes Isaiah 53, then Isaiah 6. He said they couldn't believe because their hearts were hardened. This doesn't take away their responsibility, nor does it take away my responsibility. And so you still have a responsibility, but God knows your heart. He knows your heart. God could look at my stubbornness and say, he will not believe, and I turn him over because he won't believe. That's why today is the day. Right now is the acceptable time to enter into a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. You can't put it off. You can't say you're going to wait. If you look in the book of Exodus, in Exodus, Jesus, uh, the, the, Moses said about, about Pharaoh, 
Man, so many times I went back and I looked through it. I looked at Exodus 3, 19, Exodus 4, 21, Exodus 7 and 3, Exodus 7 and 13, Exodus 8, 32, Exodus 9, 12, Exodus 7, 13, and Exodus 9, 35. Over and over again, the scripture says about Pharaoh, he says, Pharaoh will harden his heart, stubborn will a man. Then God says, I will harden Pharaoh's heart. In other words, God says, I see that Pharaoh will harden his heart. And because I see he will harden his heart and will not give in to, to my command, I'm going to harden his heart. And then he says, guess what? I'm going to do it for my glory. And God's glory was magnified because Pharaoh hardened his heart he finally allowed them to leave, and then his heart was so hard, he fled after them, and you remember the story how they all drowned. So God hardened their heart. The next thing is this. There's the flaw in their belief. Is there a flaw in your belief? See, when I open up, I was telling you about I believe, but there was a flaw in my belief. Man, I'd go to church. When I was in college, I went to church. There's some nice-looking girls at church, shoot. <laughs> but there's a flaw in your belief. If you just think that all you have to do is just believe, because the Bible said faith without works is dead, there was a flaw in their belief. You see what the scripture says? The Bible says in verse 41, Isaiah said this because he saw Jesus' glory and spoke about him. Then in verse 42, he says, Yet at the same time, many, even among the leaders, believed in him. But don't stop there. You're like, oh, yeah, the leaders, they believe. Listen to what he says. But because of the Pharisees, because of the Pharisees, they would not openly acknowledge their faith for fear they would be put out of the synagogue. For they love human praise more than praise from God. They, they love, but they didn't love God. They love praise. How many people love praise? They, they love things all about themselves. And it wouldn't allow them to come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible said that even the demons, they believe and shudder. They believe and shudder. The Bible talks about Simon, Simon the sorcerer. You remember him? The Bible said that Simon the sorcerer in Acts 8, he believed. He, he just wanted the power for his own selfishness. He didn't want it for the glory of God. How many of us are that way just for popularity? That's a flaw in your belief. And that's what these these people had, the leaders, they didn't really believe. You say, you can't say that dogmatically. You're right, I can't say it dogmatically. But looking at this text, it appears to me that they really didn't believe. And the Bible says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my father. And the only way, listen to this, don't miss this. The only way you can do the will of the father is that you have to be in relationship with his son, Jesus Christ. Anything else that you do, God rejects it. He only accepts the work that is done by the power of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Here's the last point. The last point is this. There's a fruitful faith to belief, a fruitful 
faith to belief. You want to know whether belief is genuine or real? Listen what he says, verse 47. Of verse 44, he says, Jesus cried out. Now remember, Jesus went and hid himself. So I believe that what, what John is doing is he's recalling something that Jesus has spoken. I don't believe that Jesus hid and then he came back and then he spoke this. I believe that John is, he's, he's referencing something that Jesus has spoken to them. And he says, then Jesus cried out, whoever believes in me does not believe in me only, but in the one who sent me. The one who looks at, at me is seeing the one who sent me. I have come into the world as the light so that no one who believes in, in me should stay in darkness. So the fruit of belief, the fruit of faith is belief that Jesus and the Father are one. That you believe that they're one. That there's no other way to, to the kingdom except through the Lord Jesus Christ. It's believing and living in the light of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's believing and living. 1 John 1, 7 said, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his son purifies us from all his sins. He, he has a genuine affection for the Lord Jesus Christ, and that's how he lives every single day. So the fruit of my belief the fruit of my belief, don't miss this, the fruit of it is that you live in absolute obedience to the word of God. If you read the last part of those verses in which we don't have time to do, but you have time, you will see over and over again, he mentions the word, the word, spoken, hearing the word. And so the way the fruit of your belief will be evident in your obedience to the word of God through the power of the spirit of the living God who lives in you and allows you to live in the light. That's what God does. The greatest miracle that God showed to me that allowed me my eyes to be open to him is when Jesus saved someone that was a wretch. When he saved somebody that was a wretch, that spoke to my heart. That's a miracle. Every day when I look in that mirror, I see a miracle. I'm, not, I'm like, I, can, I see a miracle. This is a miracle that God would take my life and redeem me. Yesterday, I was telling my wife, I said, every day, that hardly a day go by that I don't think about how God saved me. How he, how he picked me up a miracle. Just, just by seeing a life delivered will allow you to say, yes, there is a God. There is a Savior. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bow to you. We thank you this day for the privileged opportunity to speak your word. We already given the invitation. We gave that earlier. So, Lord, if somebody's here and they think they got another day, maybe they think they got another minute, maybe they think they got another hour, I pray that you would help them to understand that right now is the time. You can't put it off to surrender life to the Lord Jesus Christ. So we pray this in your name. Amen.